Welcome back to Learn C++ Game Development course on Udemy.com. This is lesson 3 and in this lesson we're going to learn how to handle events. In this first video we're going to create a game loop and learn how to handle basic events like key presses. So this is our project from our last video. As you can see here's the function and here's the main of the program. Let's minimize the function because we won't be changing it by pressing the minus button near it. And all the changes we're going to do in this video are going to be in the game part of the code. First of all, we're going to create an infinite game loop. And for that, we're going to use a controller, bool play is true, and then create a loop that repeats as long as play is true. So that way we can stop the loop by setting play to false. So let's create the loop by using a simple while play is equal to true. So this will repeat as long as play is true. Now every game loop has three parts. And that's the events part, the logic part, and the rendering part. We already have some rendering code here, and that's the clearing of the screen and swapping buffers. So let's cut that and put it in the rendering part of the game loop. Let's also delete the delay after the game loop, because we don't want to delay for 5 seconds once we close the loop. Because we want that the program immediately stops when we go out of the loop. So if we run this by pressing F5, the program opens and runs forever. We can only force close it by pressing the X button in the console. Now this loop repeats many times a second and that's called frames per second or FPS. You already heard that if you play games. Uh, it, the current frames per second is really big like like 500 times a second or probably much much more but we won't worry with this until lesson 4 now we have want to create that the program closes well the loop stops and then the program closes but mainly the game loop stops when we press a button so for doing that we want to use events and to use events we have to create an object that holds all the events and that object is named SDL event and we're going to name the object event really simple now this object is actually a queue a queue that holds all the events that have happened so if we press a button a new event is going to be created uh, with its type and a key associated with it and it's going to be put into the event object. So first of all in the events part of the loop we want to check if there is an event in the events queue. Uh, we can do that with an if or a while. We're going to do it with an if. So if sdl pool event and the event holder which is event object so we put it in using an end sign and event. So what this is going to do is going to take the event object and check if there's any event in the queue and it's going to return true. So if there actually is an event in there, we can check what type of an event it is. And we do that by using an if event so the event holder dot type is equal to SDL key down for a key pressed and a key up for a key released. Let's do a key up now. So if a some an event has happened and the event type is key up, we want to say play to false. 
And what's that going to do is that our game loop is going to be false, it's not going to repeat anymore, and the program will end and close. So let's run that. As you can see, I can move the screen around now, which I couldn't do before. And now if we... I'm going to hold down space. The program doesn't yet close, but once I release it, the program closes. And that's because the event type was key up, a key release. Now we want to bind it to a certain key, and let's make that the escape key. So let's do an end here. So two end signs are stand for and end. You can also type end if you want, but I prefer using signs. So if the event type is SDL key up and the key is escape, we want to set play to false and close the program. So to check what key has been pressed or released, we have to do an event dot key dot key sim dot sim and compare that to a certain key and for escape is sdlk all keys uh, have sdlk at the start and then an under dash and the name of the key escape so now this if statement only is only going to be true if the event type is a key release and the key is escape. So if we run this and mesh buttons, nothing's going to happen. But once we press and then release the escape key, the program closes. Now let's create two more events and that is Let's make it if an A has been pressed and if A has been released. And let's output to the console. So let's do another if event dot type is equal to SDL key down so that if a key has been pressed and if the event dot key dot key sim dot sim along name is equal to <coughs> SDLK under dash A. So that's for button A. And if that's true, we want to print to the console that A has been pressed. So we do a STD count. And let's say A has been pressed new line. And we want to create another event to output that A has been released. We can su simply copy this, paste it, and just change key down to key up. And we also want to change the output. So let's make it A has been released. So let's compile this and run it. We get the window. Let's move it out of the way and let's press A. As you can see, there's the output, and we, when we release A, so this works perfectly. Now let's create the last event for this video, and that is if we press X in the window, and that has a special event type. So if event dot type is equal to SDL quit. That's the event type for pressing the X button on the window. And same as up here, we set play to false to close the main game loop. So run this. And now if we press the X in the window, the program closes. And uh, that's all for this video. Thanks for listening.